today we're going to talk about the current state of photo editing on Linux. As many of you know, Adobe products like Photoshop and Lightroom became an industry standard like way too many years ago. Adobe was able to build a multi-billion business turning photo editing into accessible intuitive process available to anyone who is willing to pay the price. In fact, Photoshop is so popular that it also became a transitive verb. Today we are mostly going to talk about best free and open source alternatives to Adobe products available on Linux. Note that photo editing is an extremely broad term that is used to describe all sorts of things like color grading, cropping, retouching, post-processing and etc. And when it comes to, for example, Photoshop alternatives available on Linux, you kind of have to reinvent your whole editing pipeline and learn how to use all available free and open source apps to achieve your vision. There is simply no direct alternative that can compete with Photoshop feature to feature. But if you need powerful digital painting tool, choose Krita. If you need to do some basic retouching, GIMP is the best option. Now Photoshop allows you to process raw photos, GIMP doesn't. So you have to look for Lightroom alternatives, like Darktable or Raw Therapy. Raw Therapy is a fantastic app. Darktable is also good, though I find its UI daunting and overwhelming. A lot of people perceive Darktable as a better alternative to Lightroom. It has a lot of nice features like advanced masking, it is lightweight and you should definitely give it a try, especially if you want to become a pro photographer. But to me it feels cluttered. It takes a lot of time to get used to, in many ways I find myself disoriented, so I prefer raw therapy a little bit more. Both apps are being actively developed and both can be easily installed on any major Linux distro. Note that I'm not a professional photographer. I took photos for my own personal pleasure and only apply basic color grading. Both raw therapy and dark table work fine if you need to balance the exposure, adjust white balance, set your shadows and highlights, figure out turn curves, get rid of chromatic aberrations and apply lens correction. Please pay close attention to the fact that I'm calling it a Lightroom alternative in a sense that raw therapy might be used as an alternative to Lightroom, but at the current state it is simply not suitable for professional work. Adobe Lightroom supports all sorts of raw formats, including those that raw therapy has trouble displaying. Adobe built an enormous catalog of lens profiles and keeps it updated while raw therapy and duct table are missing new lenses. Adobe invests so much money into AI features which appeals to a regular consumer that forced color grading apps simply cannot compete with it. Same applies to GIMP, it can't compete with Photoshop or Affinity at a professional level. The only S-tier image editing app that we have on Linux is Krita. But before we go any further, allow me to ask for your support. As a one-man team, I'm responsible for everything you see on this channel, from cinematography and script writing to editing and gameplay recording. If you want to support me, please consider joining channel membership for special perks. You can also make a single donation by hitting the Thanks button underneath the video. I keep my videos completely free from paid promotions, product placements and sponsorships. I respect my audience and I need your help to keep it this way. Now let's get back to Adobe Alternatives. Krita is amazing, it is lightweight and efficient, it features a lot of amazing filters, supports non-destructive editing, it shares similar hotkeys with Photoshop and has tons of different assistants which makes learning curve a little flatter. By the way, you can even non-destructively edit multiple layers at once. Krita development team deserves a lot of credit for the amount of features they were able to pack under the hood. It has wraparound mode and there is even an animation studio built inside. But Krita is a painting app in the first place, and when it comes to photo editing, while it can help you get your work done, it can even process raw photos, but it cannot provide the same comfortable editing experience as Photoshop, especially when it comes to editing text layers. Krita doesn't have an automatic healing tool and there is no option to tweak a specific color in HSV adjustment. Another obstacle in the way of photo editing on Linux that may push professionals away is color management. On the one hand, Linux color management relies on the same standardized ICC profiles as macOS and Windows, so it's safe to say that it is functional. But on the other, there are no 10-bit color mode, GIMP lacks full CMYK color model support and HDR is still in experimental state. I've made the whole video about color management on Linux, please check it out. 
even though I myself have admitted that there are no viable alternative to Adobe products on Linux, I'm not saying that you shouldn't give it a try. Of course, you can always try to run a Windows VM with Capture One Pro in it, but I find this way of editing photos extremely inconvenient. Instead, I strongly recommend you to try projects like Darktable, GIMP and Krita and find a way to integrate them into your creative pipeline. They are not perfect, it is difficult to compare them to Adobe products, but there is one thing that makes me root for them, and that is the fact that they are community-driven, community-centric projects that treat me like a community member. Every one of those apps were designed to help me, to make my life easier to solve problems that I face every day as an independent creator. But for Adobe, we are just clients and customers. They know exactly what they are doing. Their goal is to get people excited about new version of Photoshop, to hook you into subscription model and then slowly degrade your quality of life by making monthly bill bigger and add an extra fee in case if you will decide to cancel the subscription. It is not about helping people, it's about taking from them. One year of Adobe Creative Cloud subscription for photographers will cost you more than $200. Just think about it. For the price of full-frame mirrorless lens that will serve you for decades, you can only get limited access for 24 months of Photoshop or Lightroom. That's expensive as hell. And it's not like that Photoshop is the best piece of editing software. It's definitely the most popular one, it is the one that became a transitive verb, but it's currently not in the best shape. Over the last decade, with each major update, Photoshop has only gotten worse and worse. If you have ever installed modern version of Photoshop on a Windows machine, you know how bad input lag is. And that is not something that you would expect from an app that costs more than $200 per year. Well, in fact, it is precisely what you should expect from an app that is available only through subscription model, but I digress. My point is, by investing your time and energy into free software, you are becoming less and less dependent on expensive apps that cost hundreds of dollars per year. Raw Therapy is a free and open source software, Tugtable is a free software, GIMP is a free software, and Krita, you've guessed it, is also a free software. The goal is to make healthy long-term decisions. If an application can help you elevate your work and achieve your creative vision without making you dependent on weird proprietary walled garden or subscription thing, it is good for you. As Luke Smith once put it, you will never go wrong choosing independence. This was Reluctant Anarchist and I have nothing left to say.